Today and every day, many women cope with the same pelvic health issues you face. But because it's embarrassing to discuss, we often don't mention this problem to our girlfriends, sisters, or mothers. They may be living with the same problems, but you would never know because women are not talking about it. This creates a circle of silence that leaves us uninformed. Worse, it keeps us from hearing about breakthrough treatments that solve these problems. After you watch this video, you'll be more informed about the pelvic condition known as prolapse. You'll understand that you are not alone. And you'll be very relieved to learn that there are promising treatments available that can restore your pelvic health. Prolapse is a condition that women are very reluctant to discuss. Many women are not aware prolapse even exists. This condition affects more than 30 million women in the U.S. and can affect women of all ages. However, it may be surprising to learn that one out of every two women over age 45 suffers from this condition. You need to know that you don't have to live with prolapse, but there is good news. There are new minimally invasive treatment options available to help restore your body and your confidence. Pelvic organ prolapse occurs when pelvic structures like the bladder or rectum bulge or protrude into the vaginal wall. In some cases, the vagina actually descends outside the body. If you have prolapse, it may feel like there is a mass bulging from your vagina, or there may be vaginal pain and irritation. It may be painful to have sexual intercourse, or you may have difficulty with bowel movements or urinating. Prolapse is caused when muscles and ligaments in the pelvic floor are weakened or damaged by pregnancy, childbirth, menopause, previous surgery, obesity, aging, or genetics. It may be surprising to learn that about half of all women who have given birth two or more times have some degree of prolapse. What's not surprising is studies show that many of these women are reluctant to discuss prolapse, even with their doctors. Let's take a look at different types of prolapse and how they occur. In this illustration, the pelvic area is healthy. The bladder, vagina, and rectum are well supported by the pelvic muscles and ligaments. During vaginal vault prolapse, the upper portion of the vagina, also called the apex, descends into the vaginal canal. With bladder prolapse, commonly referred to as cystocele, the bladder bulges or herniates into the vagina. A rectocele is formed when the rectum bulges or herniates into the vagina. It is possible to experience more than one type of prolapse. In addition, you may also suffer from stress urinary incontinence at the same time. This is a condition where the weakened pelvic muscles no longer support the urethra in its proper position, causing you to experience sudden, unplanned urine leakage. If you live with prolapse, you may think that nothing can be done to end your discomfort. Maybe you've had surgery in the past to correct prolapse, but it has since failed and the problem has returned. Physicians are excited about new approaches to treating different types of prolapse. These new approaches are minimally invasive and help to restore your anatomy back to its normal position. To learn more, listen as one woman shares her experience with prolapse and stress urinary incontinence and how she took control and restored her body and her confidence. Most of the symptoms that I was experiencing were um, painful sexual intercourse and um, severe bladder leakage, especially like when I would go to the bathroom, um, I would wipe and then just immediately when I would get up from the commode, I would just, I would leak. I mean, it's, it was almost like I hadn't gone at all. Before I had children, I did not realize that um, it would weaken the, my muscles at such an early age. I, when, I always thought that weakened uterine muscles would come at age 60, 65, not at 35 or 38 years old, you know, and so here I am and I have this bulge, you know, at such an early age and, and it was a scary feeling, you know, it was a feeling that, number one, that was embarrassing to talk to someone about, and number two, um, my husband didn't understand it, so I couldn't talk to him about it because he had no idea what to tell me or, you know. And so, um, yeah, I was very confused, very confused. 
a prolapse repair system repositions the pelvic organs that have shifted from their proper position. Your physician accomplishes this using either a synthetic polypropylene mesh or a biologic graft material to provide the necessary support to restore your pelvic organs to their normal position. These mesh materials are porous and conform to your body so your tissue grows into it, providing a framework of support. The use of mesh in surgery is nothing new. It's reassuring to know it has been used extensively since 1960 and is implanted in more than 4 million patients annually. The procedures to correct prolapse generally take place on an inpatient basis and are performed under general anesthesia. I just tried pads and liners, penny liners, and I just coped with it. You know, I'm married, I've been married for 17 years, and I thought, well, this is just something that I'm going to have to live with, and I have children, and, you know, this, this is just it for me. <laughs> Depending on the prolapse repair system your doctor chooses, a single vaginal incision with a few small skin incisions will be made. The mesh is inserted through an incision and placed in the body. The mesh is soft and pliable. It conforms to your normal anatomy so tissue can grow into it, providing a framework of support. In some cases, stitches may be used to secure the mesh. The incisions are closed. After the procedure, um, I had a lot of leg pain. No discomfort or pain um, were my bladder's concerned, none at all. It was mostly just the, the leg pain where you're just positioned during your surgery. The hardest thing for me was not lifting over 10 pounds for six weeks. That was the hardest thing. Other than that, I went back to work in, in 10 days. I mean, I'm a nurse on the floor and I, and I did you know everything but um, lifted over 10 pounds, so just normal activities. Of course, you know, no sex for four to six weeks. Your hospital stay will be determined by your doctor. Depending on the nature of your work, you may be able to return to work after one or two weeks. You will need to refrain from sexual intercourse, heavy lifting, and rigorous exercise for six to eight weeks. Your doctor will provide you with additional information on how to care for yourself after surgery. My life before the procedure mostly um, I had a lot of anxiety because I knew for one that when I got off work after working eight hours that, that I would immediately start having the hip pain and the lower back pain because of the prolapse and I always you know immediately had to go home take a shower with and change my clothes because of the leakage also and now, you know, I don't have that hip pain and I don't have that um, lower back pain that I did have before. And it's just totally different, you know. And now I can, I can walk at lunch during the in lunch hour if I want to. And, and it's just, I have a sense of freedom that I didn't have before. Whatever pelvic condition you face, you've taken a first step by learning more about new solutions. Now it's time to speak with your doctor and have a conversation about the available treatment options. You owe it to yourself to restore your body back to its best health. Make today the day.